Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. In this lecture, we will discuss about the diffusion of component A through non-diffusing component B with the help of example. So, the diffusion of component A through non-diffusing component B. This is component A which is diffusing through non-diffusing component B. This example the example is there is a 2 mm thick layer of water on the surface of a floor of a room. The water vaporizes and diffuses through a stagnant film of air having thickness 2.5 mm on the surface of the water. During the condition of evaporation, during the condition of evaporation, the temperature of the water is equal to the wet bulb temperature. If the water, if the air temperature is 28 degrees centigrade, determine the time required for water to completely vaporize for the following cases. So there are two cases and we are determining the evaporation, uh, evaporation time. So the case number one is the relative humidity of air is uh, 60%. So the relative humidity of air is 60% and the temperature of air is 20, 28 degree centigrade. So now the case number 2 is the floor is uh, 4 and the water penetrates at constant rate of 0 0.1 kilogram per square meter in 2 hour and the air, air humidity is 60 percent. So for case number 1 we will find the time required to completely vaporize water from the uh, surface of the floor. So this is the solution. The solution is this is the ground, ground, this is ground. You can see this is ground, and there is a two millimeter thick layer of water. So this is water is water is component A. Water is component A is water, and component B is stagnant air. So air is component B. Air is component. B and stagnant air. So the water layer is two millimeter thick. So this is this is the uh, ground, ground, and there is a two millimeter thick layer. So this is a this is a two millimeter thick layer, two millimeter thick layer of water on the surface of ground. On the surface of the water, there is a two point five millimeter thick layer of stagnant air. So this is two point five millimeter, two point five millimeter layer of air and this air is stagnant air stagnant air and this is the water wafer interface water air interface water air interface now the humidity of air the air is flowing this is the air direction so the humidity of this air is uh, 60 percent and the temperature of the air is 28 degree centigrade component a is diffusing component a is the water wafer and it is diffusing through the air so and the air is not diffusing in the water so the, this problem is related to diffusion of component a through non diffusing component b component a is water vapor component b is air we know that total flux is equal to the flux due to convective transport plus the flux due to diffusion transport so for component a the total flux will be the total flux will be Na is equal to Na plus B into Ca divided by total concentration minus DAB dCa divided by DZ. This is equation number 1. Now B is non-diffusing component. So B is non-diffusing component. So the, uh, the flux of component B will be 0 because it is non-diffusing component. So from equation number 1, Na is equal to NaCa minus DAB dCa divided by DZ. But, but the air and uh, the water wafer is diffusing through air molecules stagnant air molecule so water vapor is uh, also a gas and the air is also a gas so uh, we will use the ideal gas law to determine the concentration so the concentration will be converted into partial pressure for the gaseous system so here we know that the power from the ideal gas law pv is equal to nrt uh, and n divided by v is known as the concentration so p is equal to crt and c is equal to q divided by rt so this is the total concentration the p is total pressure and rt uh, remember that uh, the temperature is uh, this is the isothermal condition temperature is constant ca is equal to 
Pa divided by Rp. So for component A, the concentration will be equal to for field pressure of component A divided by universal gas constant M to the temperature. And this temperature is in Kelvin. Now Na is equal to Na M to C divided by Rt. In place of Ca, we will place the Pa divided by Rt. Similarly, in place of C, we will put R C divided by Rt and minus DAB M to DPA divided by DZ M to Rt. Now So we can further simplify this equation. This RT will cancel with R with RT and this is Na PA divided by T minus DAB divided by RT DPA divided by DZ. To further simplify this one, we will get this equation, this relation. And after simplification, we will get uh, this is Na. The flux of component A will be equal to minus P. This is the total pressure, the diffusivity of component A and to component B. So the diffusivity of water vapor through the stagnant layer of air molecules. So this is the DAB is the diffusivity of water vapor in the stagnant layer of air. And this RT and P minus PA. PA is the partial pressure of water vapor. And DPA divided by DZ. Z is in the direction. The diffusivity in Z direction. Suppose this was the ground. This is 2 millimeter thick layer of water. And this is the air layer. And the wa water is uh, diffusing through the air molecule. So this is the Z direction. The Z direction. This is the Z direction. So after uh, we now we will we will apply the integral sign. So after applying integration in A D Z minus P D A B divided by R T into this one. Now the N A, this is N A. So the flux is constant. D the integration will apply to D Z and D P A divided by P minus P A because this P is total pressure this is constant. D A B diffusivity of component A uh, into and the component B is also constant value, R and T is also constant, so these values will come out from the integral. So the NA is also constant, we have to come, up from, uh, come out from integral DZ minus DAB uh, and do C divided by RT and this is this one. So now this is minus DAB divided by RT and DPA by D P minus PA. Now after now we will apply the um, limit, so at Z is equal to 0, PA is equal to CNR. So at Z is equal to 0, for example, this is ground floor. And this is the 2 millimeter thick layer of uh, water, and this is the this is 2.5 millimeter thick layer of air. So this is the water air interface. This one. So this is z is equal to zero at this position. At the a water air interface, z is equal to zero, and the pressure of uh, water will be equal to wa vapor pressure of water. So at this is position, uh, P A will be equal to C N R. So the pressure of water vapor will be equal to vapor pressure of water, and it is equal to C N R. So at z is equal to 0, p a is equal to pnr and when z is equal to uh, z is equal to l. So for example, this is l. Here this is l. Z is equal to l. At z is equal to l, the uh, pressure of water molecule at this position will be equal to c a l. So the pressure of component a at l position. This is l position. This is z is equal to z na z is equal to 0. And this is the direction. So dp by dz in this z direction. Now we will go further. So when z is equal to zero, uh, p is equal to p n r, and when z is equal to l, so p a is equal to p a l. Now apply the further simplify it, and uh, after simplification, this is further simplification. So after simplification, we will. We will get this result in a flux of component a multiplied by the length through which the component a is diffusing. So this is l is the actually l is the this is the uh, ground this is water and this is the air. So l actually l is this 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 thickness of the stagnant layer of air. So this is l l and this is d a b and p p is constant it is one atmospheric pressure and r and t and p minus p a l p minus p a naught n a is equal to this one. Now N is called the flux of water vapor through the stagnant layer of air up to its top. So N A is the flux of component A. N is the N A is the flux of component A which is transferring through the N is the flux of component A, the water vapor which is transferring through this this stagnant layer of stagnant layer of uh, air molecule. So this is N A. This is the N A. Component A is transferring through the stagnant layer of air. So N A, the flux of component A, which is passing through this stagnant layer of air molecule is called N A. So N A is called the flux of water vapor through the stagnant layer 
of air up to its top and this is the top of this segment layer of air and this is the bottom so z is equal to 0 z is equal to l now this is 2 millimeter thick layer of water on the surface of the ground and this is 2.5 millimeter thickness of the stagnant layer of air so this is a stagnant 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 layer of air molecule this is 2.5 millimeter thick now from the above equation 1 from this equation from this equation from the above equation this equation this equation is n is equal to da da d t divided by l into r t l n t minus t l divided by t minus t a naught now in this equation t is the total pressure which is equal to one atmosphere pressure r 1.013 bar and t a naught is the vapor pressure of water at the interface so t a naught is the vapor pressure at this interface the pressure of water is called the vapor pressure of water so this is t a naught is the vapor pressure of water at the interface at the liquid or gas interface liquid air interface so p a l is the vapor pressure of water at z is equal to l so the vapor pressure of water at this position will be p a l p a l d a b is the divisivity of component a and component b the divisivity of water vapor in the air will be uh, called d a b now a is the water vapor a is gas b is the air which is component b now how can we determine the divisivity of water vapor in the stagnant layer of air molecule so the divisivity of one gas in another gas how can we obtain this dab because this dab is present in the uh, flux equation which we have already uh, already derived so the dab from equation number one can be de determined from the fuller equation this fuller equation is an empirical equation from this equation you can determine the divisivity of water vapor in the stagnant layer of air so dab is equal to this one multiplied by temperature in kelvin to the power 1.75 divided by pressure in the bar and this is the uh, eva to the power 1 over 3 plus evb uh, to the power 1 divided by 3 uh, whole power of 2 um, n to 1 divided by ma plus 1 divided by mb uh, to the power 1 divided by 2 and the diffusivity unit in this from this equation is uh, as in meter square per second so what is the in this fuller equation the pressure is in bar and this work up to 10 bar or 10 uh, atm pressure depend on the situation so and temperature is in kelvin this temperature is in kelvin and m is the molecular weight of a water the molecular weight of water this m a is the molecular weight of component a and component a is water so the molecular weight, uh, com, weight molecular mass of or the molecular weight of water is 18 gram per mole and this mb is the molecular weight of air mb it is equal to about 28 or 28.4 or 5 gram per mole va and vb are the molar volume of diffusion volume of component a and component b so the sum of diffusion volume of component a is equal to the water because this sum is for because this molecule is composed of two hydrogen atom and one oxygen atom so this is this is the sum of atomic diffusion volume the sum of atomic diffusion volume of for molecule a and this is the sum of atomic diffusion volume for molecule b molecule b will b is air so uh, this is the from the fuller table <coughs> or from literature you can get the uh, atomic diffusion volume for uh, um, uh, water is equal to 12.7 and for air the atomic diffusion volume is equal to 20.1 so we will put these value in this equation in a and b as also we know the temperature we also know so the diffusion the diffusivity of water <coughs> the diffusivity of water vapor in air at zero degree centigrade is given in various books tables and literature so you can get the diffusivity the diffusivity of water vapor in the air at various at zero degree centigrade is given in various tables literature online and table graph so the diffusivity of water vapor in air at 0 degree centigrade is equal to 0 0.22 centimeter square per second this value is obtained from literature and the diffusivity of water vapor in the air at 298.2 uh, uh, kelvin will be equal to it will slightly uh, increase the diffusivity of water vapor in the air at 298.2 kelvin will be slightly increased because the diffusivity of gases increase with temperature so 
So we know that it is duty of water vapor and air at zero degree centigrade, which is equal to this one. This is a pen from literature. So the residuity of water vapor in the air at 298.2 Kelvin will be uh, derived from this relation. This is relation 1 and relation 2. So this is again the polar equation. There is some constant term at this side, this side 1 divided by Ma plus Mb. So these are both will be equal, so it will be cancelled with each other. The residuity at temperature number 1 is equal to temperature 1 to the power 1 divided by 1 to the power 1.75 and the residuity at temperature number 2 is equal to d2 into 1.75 now divide this equation by this one so we will get dab at temperature 2 divided by at divisivity at temperature 1 is equal to t2 divided by t1 to the power 1.75 so the divisivity at 0 degree is d1 so this one and this t2 is 298.2 kelvin 298.2 kelvin this is temperature at 0 this is 0 degree centigrade at which divisivity is d1 0 degree centigrade which is equal to 273 uh, kelvin now this is 298 this 298 is equal to 25.2 degree how uh, what is what is mean by this temperature 22 how can we get this 22 25.2 degree so this 25.2 uh, degree centigrade temperature is the average temperature of the air film the stagnant air film average temperature for example this was uh, uh, this was the ground this is the air this is the water layer and this is the air 2.5 now this is the interface and this is this is the air this is 28 degrees centigrade and here you can this is the uh, this is the bulb temperature this is the 22 wet bulb temperature of water which is given 22 point 22.5 point, uh, degrees centigrade so this is 22 uh, 22.2 uh, degrees centigrade so th this this when we combine these two and divide by two so we will get the average temperature of the stagnant uh, layer of the air molecule so this is the average temperature of this layer is equal to 298.2 kelvin so divisivity of component a in the component b at 298.2 kelvin will be equal to 2.567 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 5 meter square per second now this is now what is 298 point again it is 1 2.98.2 kelvin what is mean by this this is the stagnant air film mean temperature so this is 22.5 is the this temperature is the water temperature and 28 is the air temperature so again divide this by 2 we will get 25.2 degrees centigrade this is this is in degree in kelvin this is 298.2 kelvin so now this is again the situation comes for flux of component a this equation we have already derived this is the divisivity of component a in the component b so the divisivity of component a in the component b at 298 kelvin we have derived this value this value in the this divisivity this this one we have already derived the divisivity of 298.2 kelvin so we obtained this value now this divisivity is obtained from polar equation and this p is the total temperature 180 m r is universal gas constant t is temperature l is the length this is the length of the stagnant layer of air molecule and this is again 180 m t l is the pressure the vapor pressure of air at the outer surface of the stagnant layer of air molecule this is again 180 m this is the vapor pressure at the water air interface so again these value are given the p is the 180 m pressure or this bar p n r is the vapor pressure of water at the vapor liquid interface and p l is the vapor pressure of water at the outer surface of the stagnant layer of air l is the length of the stagnant air film which is 2.5 millimeter again this is universal gas constant so what is how can we obtain this PIL? This PIL is obtained from the Antoine equation. So in the Antoine equation, we can obtain from Antoine equation we can obtain the partial the vapor pressure of air in the uh, at the surface of the stagnant layer of air molecule. So again log of this this is Antoine equation P pressure is in bar in this Antoine equation and this Antoine equation for this Antoine equation A B C uh, value are given A is equal to this one B is equal to this C is equal to this one and this internal equation works between at this temperature and 273 uh, up to 303 uh, kelvin so again this is uh, this is okay uh, because at uh, the surface of the uh, stagnant layer the temperature is uh, 28 degree which is equal to 301 kelvin so this is again okay uh, so from this equation after putting value in the internal equation the vapor pressure of air at the surface of the stagnant film uh, stagnant air film will be equal to uh, 0 0.034 bar this is uh, obtained from the Antoni equation now 
is again from similarly P and R. So P and R is the vapor pressure of uh, vapor pressure of water at the water air interface, which is also obtained at the wet bulb temperature. At the wet bulb temperature. So again here we will put the wet bulb temperature of wet bulb temperature of the uh, water. So wet bulb temperature of water, which is 22.5 uh, uh, 22.5 degree, you can convert into Kelvin. So uh, you can obtain the vapor pressure of uh, vapor pressure of water molecule at the water air interface so how can we obtain this uh, uh, wet bulb temperature this this is obtained at wet bulb temperature this vapor pressure at the water air interface now what is wet bulb temperature so wet bulb temperature of the water can be obtained from the humidity chart so again go to the humidity chart this is the humidity chart this is the humidity chart in this humidity chart you will uh, the uh, the Dry, the dry bulb temperature this is the dry bulb temperature in this is the dry bulb temperature so we know the dry bulb temperature of air is 28 degree centigrade and the humidity is 60 the uh, the, the uh, relative humidity of air is 60 percent so at 60 percent at 28 bulb uh, degree or uh, dry bulb temperature so again this is 28 degree degree centigrade this is the dry bulb temperature and the humidity is relative humidity is 28 so again go upward here, here you can this is the 60 percent line 60 percent relative humidity line this is the 40 percent this is 30 percent 20 percent 10 percent and this is 100 percent humidity saturated humidity line so you can obtain the specific humidity also and again go in this direction in this direction this is 22.5 degree this is the wet bulb temperature wet bulb temperature so at this temperature we will obtain the vapor pressure of water at the water air interface so this at this temperature we obtain the vapor pressure so now relative humidity of the uh, per 60 percent relative humidity so as we know that there is 60 percent relative humidity in the air so uh, the partial pressure now how the what will be the partial pressure of the uh, water molecule in the air so 60 percent relative humidity so c a l dash will be equal to 60 percent p a L. So 60% multiplied by this PL. This PL is equal to 0 0.034 bar. So again, this is the partial pressure of water molecule in the air, which is 60% humid. So this is 0 0.04 bar. Now Na is equal to this one. So again, this is the humidity which is obtained from polar equation. This is we know this is the universal gas constant. This is the temperature. This is the temperature average uh, film temperature, average stagnant layer average temperature. This is the thickness of the layer 2.5 millimeter. Which is converted into meter. This is the uh, one atm pressure, which is equal to this bar, and this PAL dash. PAL dash value is this one, and this is one atm, and this is 0 0.07. So this is the PA naught, the vapor pressure of water at the water air interface. So putting value, we will get the flux of component A in the stagnant layer of air molecule, which is equal to this, this, this one, this one. Now as we assume that the area of the floor is from which the diffusion is occurring uh, is uh, the area we assume the area of the uh, room of floor is equal to one uh, uh, one meter square we know that the density of the water is thousand kilogram per square meter so uh, density is equal to mass divided by volume of water so density of water is one thousand kilogram per square meter multiplied by volume we will get the mass of water present on the surface of the floor so mass of water which is present on the surface of the floor is equal to density of water multiplied by volume so the area the thickness of the water layer the thickness of water layer is 2 millimeter this is the ground 2 millimeter thickness and this is the air so this is the thickness and the area of the floor is the area of the floor is 1 square meter so uh, this is the uh, 1 square meter multiplied by this is the volume multiplied by area is equal to area multiplied by height is equal to volume and this is the density so we will get the mass of the air, mass of the water present on the surface of the floor so so after putting value the, there is 2 kilogram water present on the surface of the floor of the room so we know that the flux is this one in kilomole per square meter into second so mass of water per square meter is equal to 2 kilogram per square meter per square meter okay now how can we obtain the time required to completely vaporize the water from the surface of the uh, surface of the floor so molar flux of water is this one now we will obtain the mass flux so when molar flux is uh, multiply with the uh, molecular uh, weight of water because this is for component a which is water 
so when the molar flux of uh, water vapor is multiplied by the molecular weight of water we will get the mass flux of water vapor which is passing through the stagnant layer of air molecule so this is uh, the mass flux is equal to the molar flux multiply molar flux and multiply by the molecular weight of the water vapor which is 18 gram per mole now this is uh, conversion 1 kilo mole is equal to 1000 mole and these are cancelled with each other so uh, and the mass flux this is again uh, we know that uh, uh, 1 uh, 1000 kilogram is equal to 1 uh, 1000 gram is equal to 1 kilogram so this is again uh, conversion some conversion so after conversion we will get the mass flux of water vapor which is passing through the air which is equal to this one this is the mass flux of water vapor in the air stagnant layer so what will be the time required to completely vaporize water from the surface of the uh, floor so that this is the 2 kilogram per square meter this is the mass of water this is we assume 1 square meter and this is the mass flux so this divided by mass flux we will get the time required to uh, completely disappear water from the surface of the floor so the water will disappear from surface of the floor in 15.3 hours now this is this was case number one now what is case number two so we now we will go to case number two so the case number two is that there is some penetration from the surface of from the surface of the floor so there is some penetration in case number two what is case number two we will go now again the case number two there is a there is a ground and there is some water is penetrating inside the ground inside the ground and the penetration rate of water is this and the water is formed some oh, 2 millimeter thick layer on the surface of a floor which is 2 millimeter thick layer and there is a uh, air layer on the surface of the water layer so on the surface of the there is 2.5 millimeter thick layer of air stagnant layer this is water vapor now this is the again 28 degree and humidity is 60 percent humidity air now there is some penetration some water is penetrating inside and some water is evaporating into the air so the total loss of water uh, will be equal to the loss due to penetration and loss due to evaporation so penetration loss is given in the question which is 0.1 kilogram per square meter into r this is the penetration loss of water and uh, the evaporation loss of water is this one this is obtained in the first case this is the evaporation in the mass flux we already obtained first of all we obtained the molar flux and after that we obtained the mass flux so this is the problem mass the operation loss which we have already obtained in case number one this is case number two so what is the total loss of water the total loss of water is equal to the loss due to evaporation this loss plus the loss due to uh, uh, penetration this loss so the evaporation loss is this one which is the mass flux but here the flux is in um, the flux is in second so we will convert into hours so 3600 uh, 36 seconds is equal to one hour okay and plus this is the loss due to penetration which is given in the question so the total uh, loss of water uh, to, uh, in the second case is 0 0.304 kilogram per square meter into hours so what how much time will be required to completely uh, completely disappear water from the surface of the floor so the time required for completely disappear of water is equal to t and it is equal to this is uh, this is already obtained in the case number one which is two kilogram and we assume one square meter area so okay and this is the mass flux total mass flux uh, the total uh, uh, disappearing rate or the total loss of water which is this one this one so divided by this one we will get the time so the time required to completely disappear water from the surface of the floor in the second case when there is some penetration inside the floor will be equal to 8.68 hours so this was all about the uh, diffusion of component A through non-diffusing component B. Thank you very much for your attention. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.